Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's start today's presentation with the dua. Bismillahillazi la yaduhu ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis samai wa huwa as-sami'ul alim. Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever recites this dua three times in the morning and three times in the evening, Nothing can harm him or her. I am Dr. Nivid Alam. I am consultant neurologist at Light Hospital, Faisalabad. Today, I will discuss with you approach to dementia. First of all, we will discuss what is dementia. Dementia is defined by DSM criteria as memory impairment plus at least one of the following: following aphasia, apraxia. Agnosia, disturbance in executive functioning. Disturbance in one and two, meaning memory impairment, and in uh, four of these, should be at such a level that interferes with daily functioning of that person. Does not exclusively occur during delirium, meaning that delirium is a, a transient process that occurs due to metabolic disturbance or. Uh, uh, any infections, dementia should not be assessed during the delirium. And number three point that uh, um, disturbance in these should be of such level that uh, the daily function of the patient is impaired, meaning that uh, if I forget something accidentally, I forget the name of a relative, it doesn't mean I have dementia. So, meaning that uh, Disturbance should be at le at the level that uh, is going to impair my daily functioning. What are the activities of daily living when we label the patient as dementia? We also write down uh, where the patient can perform his ADLs. ADLs meaning activities of daily living including bathing, toileting, transfer, dressing, eating or IADL meaning instrumental activities of daily living that these are the executive functioning of a person maintaining household shopping transportation or maintaining his finances this is called as iadl or instrumental activities of daily living what are the risk factors for dementia old age is an obvious risk factor for dementia family history of ad meaning alzheimer disease or parkinson disease also is a risk factor for dementia if a patient has uh, dementia is in 30 percent of the cases is genetic in nature had trauma predisposes a patient person to dementia depression low educational attainments hyperlipidemia diabetes and hypertension females are more prone to dementia down syndrome estrogen use as oral contraceptive uh, and and says uh, in few studies have shown to increase the risk factor for dementia but not confirmed yet and then at the last but not least the causes of dementia that are reversible or treatable for example dementia due to malnutrition uh, for example b12 deficiency dementia is due to dehydro uh, dehydration Dementia due to metabolic dysfunction, for example, hypothyroidism can lead to dementia, vitamin B12 deficiency, depression and delirium can lead to dementia, <clears throat> but they are treatable. How to assess a patient with uh, dementia? These are the screening tests, but the most common one that is used is mini mental state examination. That is a 30 question questionnaire and then mini cog is also used that can be done in three minutes mini mental state examination or mmse is a long questionnaire mini cog is a small test what is mini mental state examination we ask the patient 30 questions <clears throat> 10 questions for orientation five for uh, orientation in time five for orientation in place for example orientation in place means uh, what's the name of a country other question for orientation in place is what's the province that we are living in, uh, what's the city that we are here, 
uh, what's the place that we are at this time then registration attention and calculation calculation means patient is asked to uh, seven seven series backward patient is asked to calculate 100 minus 7 and then continue 100 minus 7 what will be the answer 93 if patient tells correctly he will be scored as 1 then further backward 93 minus 7 86 minus 7 79 minus 7 72 and then minus 7 65 five points will be given for one point will be given for each correct answer then recall language is assessed by naming patient is asked what's the name of uh, patient may be shown a ball pen or uh, watch and patient is asked to name it what's the name of this thing then video spatial orientation of the patient is assessed by drawing so the total score is 30 patient uh, with less than 25 is labeled as dementia then different types of dementia number one is most common one is alzheimer disease 60 to 80 percent of cases of dementia in older patients are due to alzheimer disease alzheimer's patients present early with personality changes loss of short-term memory patient may remember from uh, what's the name of uh, what's the name of uh, his school from where he, he has done his uh, matriculation but he could not remember what he has at in the morning in his breakfast this is an example of loss of short-term memory then functional impairment visual spatial disturbances is an early finding in patients with uh, alzheimer disease for example patient goes to the mosque daily uh, from 10 20 years but he may forget the way to his back to home or may forget the way to the mosque this is an example of impaired visual spatial orientation apraxia patient has uh, inability to perform the skilled uh, movements the language disturbances patient has difficulty name uh, difficulty naming the objects patient may feel uh, have delusions or hallucinations uh, visual or auditory hallucinations in advanced cases of alzheimer disease onset of alzheimer disease is usually after 65 years of age alzheimer disease uh, uh, usually occurs without any uh, focal neurological deficits meaning that there is no evidence of stroke in the patients with alzheimer disease uh, when we order the MRI brain of the patient, we will see bilateral hippocampal atrophy that is suggestive of Alzheimer's disease. Then vascular dementia. Vascular dementia is uh, in which there is a cognitive impairment due to the strokes, due to uh, vascular events. Vascular dementia is characterized by a step ladder pattern decline in the cognition. For example, patient is at this level and then there is a stroke and suddenly falls down and then achieves a static level and then again stroke and then again the cognition falls. In Alzheimer's disease, there is a progressive decline in the cognition but in vascular dementia, this is a step ladder pattern decline in cognition or memory uh, clinically we um, can have uh, uh, signs and symptoms of stroke CT or MRI may be ordered to see for the infarcts uh, this is an MRI of the brain of the patient with the vascular dementia showing multiple tiny infarcts on in the different regions bilaterally on on different uh, on uh, different regions of the brain overlap syndrome is in which uh, alzheimer disease and vascular dementia coexist most of the cases previously labeled as alzheimer disease or vascular dementia prob probably have both likelihood of alzheimer disease and vascular disease significantly increases with age therefore likelihood of both does as well 
Parkinson disease may be associated with dementia. 30% of patients with Parkinson disease develop dementia usually after two years of onset of Parkinson disease. Hallucinations and delusions may occur as a part of Parkinson's dementia. Dementia with Lewy bodies, DLB, this is also called DLB, it has four cardinal features. Number one is Parkinsonism, that is patients having uh, Parkins signs of Parkinsonism including bradykinesia, rigidity or, or tremors. Number two is visual hallucinations, patients will have visual hallucinations. Number three is uh, sleep disorders, REM, sleep, re rapid eye movement, sleep disorders and then dementia. These are the cardinal features of uh, dementia with Lewy bodies. Progressive supranuclear palsy is a type of uh, Parkinson plus syndrome that is uh, characterized by a supranuclear type of uh, palsy in the downward gaze of the eyes. It is also, patients also have postural instability due to that patient uh, repeatedly falls and patients have surprised or scary look due to the uh, facial dystonia. These are the characteristics of progressive supranuclear palsy. Then modifiable causes of dementia, medications, alcohol, metabolic, B12, thyroid, hyponatremia, hypercalcemia, hepatic or renal dysfunctions could lead to dementia. Depression, CNS neoplasm, chronic subdural hematoma is an example of modifiable cause of dementia. Then normal pressure hydrocephalus is also treatable uh, by via shunting. What is normal pressure hydrocephalus? It is a triad of gait disturbance, uni incontinence and cognitive dysfunction. This is a, a CT brain of patient with uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus. In normal pressure hydrocephalus, the patient is diagnosed as a case of normal pressure hydrocephalus via uh, when we suspect clinically and we perform the lumboperitone LP of that patient. In LP, the patient has hydrocephalus, but on LP, the pressure will be normal. And if we drain 30 cc of the fluid, there will be immediate improvement in the gait of that patient. This is a diagnostic test of the patients with normal pressure hydrocephalus. This is called Miller Fisher test. Patient's gait is assessed before lumbar, uh, LP, and then LP is done in 30 cc of the fluid. CSF is removed and again gate is done and patient is seen for improvement. If patient has improvement, patient is labeled as normal pressure hydrocephalus. MRI may also help is also helpful in patients with uh, norm, uh, diagnosing patients with normal pressure hydrocephalus. The treatment of choice for normal pressure hydrocephalus is uh, lumboperitoneal shunting. Other treatable cause of dementia is chronic subdural hematoma. Chronic subdural hematoma patients only patients present with insidious onset of headache, lightheadedness, cognitive impairment, apathy, somnolence. Occasionally patient may have seizures. There may or may not be history of fall because in old age due to dementia, patient may not recall that he has fallen over uh, in the washroom. So, even if there is history or there is no history of uh, fall, we will proceed for the neuroimaging and this to rule out chronic subdural hematoma. This is CT brain of a patient with chronic subdural hematoma. This is chronic because acute subdural hematoma is hyper dense or white on CT brain, but the chronic subdural hematoma is black or hypo dense on, uh, on CT brain. This is chronic one. It has, uh, it shows a midline shape. This ventricle is normal, but this ventricle is constricted. It should be in there is midline shape. This should, the line should be over here, but this ventricle has gone on the other side, indicating midline shape due to the pressure effects of this chronic subdural hematoma. Treatment of choice is immediate evacuation of this uh, subdural hematoma. Other infections like syphilis and HIV may lead to dementia. And now the treatment of Alzheimer's disease dementia. 
there are uh, two types of drugs uh, that are approved by FDA. Number one is uh, cholinesterase inhibitors like donipezil. It comes uh, in a dose of uh, 5 and 10 mg, may be easily titrated. Other cholinesterase inhibitors like ribostigmine and galantamine can also be used in patients with dementia. These are the drug, three drugs that are uh, uh, recommended by FDA in mild to moderate dementia. But in severe dementia, memantine is required. Memantine is an NMDA receptor antagonist. Theoretically, NMDA receptor in cases of uh, Alzheimer disease, overstimulation of NMDA receptor by glutamate leads to progressive neurodegeneration. So, giving this NMDA receptor antagonist blocks the glutamate induced uh, neurodegeneration. This is a trial in patients, 126 patients um, were given memantine, and it was seen that uh, uh, MMSC has uh, decreased over time in uh, memantine group by 0.5 yearly and in uh, not uh, using memantine it has declined by 1.2 that was statistically significant other treatment options uh, for uh, dementia and patients uh, have concomitant uh, depression or psychosis that should be addressed Patients uh, eating habits should be maintained because the patients of dementia die or worsens due to dehydration. So patients uh, should be prompted to take adequate amounts of water. Patients uh, may progress due to decrease in eating or patients die due to contractures and bad sore formations. So, in cases of advanced dementia, all uh, other methods should be, all other things should be addressed to treat advanced dementia. Proper nursing care should be done to uh, treat patients of advanced dementia. Thank you all for your listening.